Honeybee, The Busy Life of Apis Mellifera by Candace Fleming and Eric Roman. One summer morning, deep in the nest, a brand new honeybee squirms, pushes, chews through the wax cap of her solitary cell and into a teeming, trembling flurry. Hum. Tongues lick, antennas touch, bodies clamber and scramble over thin wax comb. The new bee rests. Soft, fuzzy, and female, like all newly emerged worker bees, her scientific name is Apis mellifera, or Apis for short. Crawling to a cell packed with sticky, rich pollen, Apis eats, and eats, and eats some more. Her wings dry, her color darkens to a warm yellow orange, her muscles grow strong. Strong enough for flying? Not yet. Cleaning comes first. Apis's first job is to tidy the hive's nursery. She hauls away leftover bits, carts off old wax caps, leaves each cell ready for a new bee egg. When she turns three days old, special glands behind her face swell and expand. Soon, she is ready for her next job. Flying? Not yet. Nursing. The grub-like larva get all her attention. She checks them, inspects them, feeds them a milky sweet liquid made with those glands. On Apis's eighth day of life, she leaves the nursery. For flying? Not yet. Queen tending. Long and graceful, the queen slide, glides along the, across the combs. 2,000 times a day, the queen stops to drop a single egg into a single cell. Pearly white, half the size of a grain of rice, each will grow into a bee. The queen doesn't have time to take care of herself. So Apis and the others groom her with their forelegs, examine her with their tongues, feed her a drop of sweet brood food, work her mouth to queen mouth. As they do, they pick up the queen's scent with their antenna, legs, tongues. They pass the scent along to the rest of the nest, a message that the queen is healthy and safe. When Apis turns 12 days old, glands in her abdomen begin making flakes of white wax. It is time for her new job. Flying? Not yet. Comb building. Using her wax, her sharp spoon-shaped jaw, and her legs, she shapes, molds, maneuvers to create cells. But Apis is not a builder for long. Three days later, she starts flying? Not yet. Food handling. Apis stands on soft honeycomb, waiting. A forager bee approaches. Dusted with pollen and smelling of sunshine and fresh air, she is loaded with nectar. Food for the colony. Apis creeps toward her. Furry heads bump, and the forager brings up the nectar into her open mouth. Sticking out her straw-like tongue, Apis si sips up the nectar. She folds and unfolds, folds and unfolds, folds and unfolds her mouth, until the nectar grows thicker, stickier. She stores the half-dried nectar in an empty cell. Over the next few days, it will ripen into honey. When Apis turns 18 days old, she is ready to start her life outside. Flying? Not yet, guarding against birds or bears and bees from other nests. Patrolling a tiny patch of the haves by the hive's entrance, Apis sniffs each incoming worker with her antenna. Friend or foe? Two bees hover nearby. Apis bends her antenna toward them and tests the air. They do not smell like members of her colony. She stands on her hind legs, they do not act like colony members. Apis lets off an alarm scent to warn the others. Robber bees! They've come to steal honey from the nest. 
Apis flings herself at one of them. The two grab hold of each other's legs. They curl their abdomens. They roll and grapple. Apis buzzes, bites, furrows. She is willing to give up her life to protect her nest and its honey. She bites harder. Shaking her off, the robber flies away. At last, on the 25th day of her life, with the sun just rising and the, dunes and the dew still drying, she leaps from the nest and flies. Thousands of other bees rise from the nest too, first to orient themselves and then to forage for water or collect a sticky plant sap called propolis, a kind of bee glue, or gather pollen. And Apis, she is in search of sweet nectar. Her antenna tastes the breeze. Milkweed, coneflower, clover. She can smell the sugary goodness inside their blossoms. Apis follows the floral odor for miles Wings beating 200 times a second until she circles down. She alights on a blossom. She scrambles over its petals, searching for nectar inside. Poking her long tongue deep inside the flower, she sips and swallows and skips to the next flower. The sugary fluid does not go into her belly. It goes into a special sac called a honey stomach. This is how Apis will carry her nectar home. As she visits each flower, grains of pollen stick to her brushy body. They cling to her bristly legs. She carries this pollen from flower to flower, brushing it off, picking it up, pollinating the field. At last, her honey stomach weighs almost as much as she does. Then, wings working hard, she flies back to the hive, where she gives up her nectar to a food handler. Now will she rest? No, she will dance. Wagging her tail, Apis circles to the left, then to the right. She runs in a long straight line. Other bees gather around. They listen to the vibrations of her dance. Apis is giving directions. She's telling them the nectar is sweet. She's asking them to go there too. Soon, a stream of bees head for her find. Apis makes nine more trips that day, gathering, pollinating, before the sun finally sets and she can rest. But she will go back tomorrow, and the day after that, and the day after that. She grows thinner and slower. She loses her hair. Her wings fray and tatter. Summertime bees do not live long. And Apis is now 35 days old. She has flown back and forth between nest and blossoms 500 miles in all. She has visited 30,000 flowers. She has collected enough nectar to make one tenth, uh, one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey. Her work is done. On the morning, Apis drops to the ground. The air is warm. The sun is rising and the nectar is sweet. She rolls to her back. Her legs loo move limply. Her wings beat weakly. Above her, blossoms nod in the summer breeze. Apis stills. And back in the nest, a brand new honeybee squirms, pushes, chews through the wax cap of her solitary cell and into a teeming, trembling fury, flurry. Hum. parts of the bee. You can read more about this on your own. But here are the wings, the stinger. I will read a little bit about that one. The stinger is extended only when she senses danger. As the stinger penetrates skin, venom is pumped from her venom sac and also, also located in the abdomen. It is this venom that causes the bee sting to hurt. Bees can only sting humans and other animals once. Stinging kills the bee. So remember, the bee does not want to sting you unless they have to. So just move slowly. If you swat at them, that's when you're going to get stung. 
but if you move slowly around them, they'll just go on about their business and find another flower. Legs, three pairs of legs. Eyes, Apis has five of these. Two big eyes called compound eyes take up most of her head and are used to distinguish light and color, making them especially useful for spying flowers. Her three tiny eyes called ocelli are too small to be seen here. They are arranged in a triangle pattern between her compound eyes. They have just one purpose, determining the brightness and intensity of light. Oh, I didn't know about that. Antenna. They're her nose. That's what she senses with. And her proboscis, long straw-like organ, kind of like a tongue. And mandibles, powerful spoon-shaped jaws. But that was... Oh, here's some about helping out honeybees. Yeah, honeybees are kind of in trouble, and they're really important for the health of the planet. But that was Honeybee, The Busy Life of Apis Mellifera by Candace Fleming and Eric Roman. And this is EDU Kidspace. Subscribe for more stories, books, and lessons. And if there's something in particular you'd like to learn about, leave me a message um, on the channel. And if you want to support the channel, you can hit the link to the Patreon page in the video description. Thanks for watching!